This LIT video is on approach to chest pain in children. In this video, we will be discussing the list of differential diagnoses for chest pain and then the approach, which will be based on history, physical examination, and investigations. Chest pain is a common complaint in the emergency department in pediatrics. However, unlike the adult population, chest pain is rarely due to a cardiac etiology. By knowing what red flags to look out for, the history and physical examination will help to differentiate dangerous causes from benign causes. Pathophysiology Organic causes can be approached from an exterior to interior approach and are generally caused by structures that have pain receptors to give rise to this feeling. An example of using an exterior to interior approach would be skin, peripheral nervous system, musculoskeletal system, pleural membrane, blood vessels, pericardium, myocardium, and esophagus. The differentials to chest pain can be approached in a similar manner. First, for organic causes, we will consider differentials for skin. This includes traumatic injuries such as abrasions or lacerations, or local infections or inflammation of the skin that can result in cellulitis or an abscess. Then, we will look at musculoskeletal causes, which are common in children. This includes costochondritis, which is inflammation of the ribs, as well as slipping rib syndrome. Do not forget to consider trauma to the chest wall, which can result in fractures of the rib or sternum. Next, we will look at the pleural membrane, which is the lining that surrounds the lungs. These conditions are usually associated with concomitant breathlessness. We should consider differentials like pneumothorax, which can be spontaneous or trauma-induced, or pleural effusion and pneumonia. Now, moving on to cardiac causes. Here, we should consider the blood vessels, pericardium, and myocardium. There can also be structural defects that affect the left ventricular outflow tract, such as hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, and aortic stenosis. We should also consider inflammatory causes such as myocarditis and pericarditis. For blood vessels, we consider pulmonary embolism, which refers to obstruction of the vessels. In rare cases, we need to think about life-threatening causes such as an aortic dissection or ruptured aortic aneurysm. For completeness, think about abnormal coronary arteries like anomalous left coronary artery from the pulmonary artery, also known as Alcapa. Finally, we look at esophageal causes as well as psychological causes. In terms of esophageal causes, consider inflammation which may result in esophagitis. This can be due to gastroesophageal reflux disease. And in terms of psychological causes, we consider causes such as anxiety, stress, psychosomatic pain, or attention-seeking behavior. This is more commonly seen in adolescents as compared to young children. The pain reported is often non-specific, non-localized, and is not accompanied by any abnormal physical signs. Foreign body ingestion may also be present with chest pain, or more commonly, may be asymptomatic. When taking history, you can use the Socrates approach, which asks about sight, onset, character, radiation, alleviating factors, time, exacerbating factors, and severity. In general, Pertinent points to ask would be to clarify what the patient means by chest pain. Ask about the nature of the pain, whether it is a sharp poking pain, throbbing pain, or feeling of tightness in the chest. Importantly, was it triggered by exertion? This is a red flag. Conversely, chest pain that occurs while the child is at rest is very likely to be cardiac in origin. Ask about the site of the pain, any radiation, what is the frequency and duration of the pain, and its severity. Does the pain worsen on exertion, or is it related to meals? Is it pleuritic in nature? Does it worsen with deep breathing or coughing? Do not forget to ask about a history of recent trauma to the chest wall. Make sure to ask about family history. Inquire specifically about any known abnormal cardiac structures, known history of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, arrhythmias, early deaths, 
or even recurrent miscarriages. Rarely, drugs like cocaine, if used, may cause chest pain. In the past medical history, ask if there is a history of asthma or Marfan syndrome. These predispose the child to pneumothorax. Has there been any previous cardiac history or surgery performed? If there has been a previous history of Kawasaki disease, this child may have developed coronary aneurysms, especially if it was not treated promptly. When suspecting psychogenic causes, the social history is especially important to elicit any recent stresses that could account for the child's symptoms. When doing a physical examination, approach the patient in a systematic manner. Start with the vital signs. Check the heart rate and blood pressure against age-related norms. On inspection, look for signs of respiratory distress, such as increased work of breathing or cyanosis. When examining the chest, look out for signs of trauma. Now, we move on to palpation and percussion. Palpate for tracheal deviation and localize any chest wall tenderness. This is especially important because if there is chest pain reproducible on palpation, it is very likely to be musculoskeletal in nature. On percussion, look out for an asymmetrical percussion note. A dull percussion note in the presence of other signs of infection, like fever and cough, could mean a consolidation pointing towards the pneumonia, while a hyperresonant percussion note could point to a pneumothorax. Next, auscultation. Listen for heart sounds and check if the heart sounds are soft or if there's a gallop rhythm present. These are both red flags for cardiac causes. Do a detailed auscultation, both anteriorly and posteriorly, listening for air entry and the presence of any adventitious sounds such as bronchi or crepitations. Always remember to palpate the abdomen for hepatomegaly and check the femoral pulses for any radiofemoral delay. Investigations When working up a child with chest pain, we can further split our investigations into bloods, radiological investigations, and others. For blood investigations, consider doing cardiac enzymes, especially if you suspect acute myocarditis. A full blood count can be done to look at total whites, which may be suggestive of an underlying infection. For radiological investigations, a chest x-ray should be done for the child. As for others, a 12-lead ECG should be done for the child, looking out for any abnormalities such as arrhythmias. A cardiology referral for 2D echocardiogram, also known as a 2D echo, should be done if there are red flags on history and physical examination. 2D echoes are useful to rule out structural abnormalities, motion wall abnormalities, and to assess for cardiac function as well as to look out for the presence of any pericardial effusion. Now, let's discuss the chest x-ray. On the CXR, look at the mediastinal outline and check the cardiac size. If the cardiothoracic ratio exceeds 0.5, or in neonates 0.6, there is cardiomegaly. However, do take note that if the film was a supine film or poorly inspired, it would not be easy to assess the cardiac size. Also, make sure to follow through the mediastinal outline looking for the presence of any air that would suggest pneumomediastinum. On a chest x-ray, look for the cardiothoracic ratio and follow through the lung interstitial markings to make sure there is no pneumothorax. Remember to follow through the lung interstitial markings all the way to the peripheries. It is also important to look for signs of pneumonia or pleural effusions in a chest x-ray. The ECG should be systematically reviewed, specifically looking at rate, rhythm, axis, PR interval, the QRS waves, ST, T changes, and the QT interval. Look at this 12-lead ECG. We start by determining the rate, rhythm, and axis. The rate is determined by 300 divided by the number of big squares between R to R. Look to see if every QRS is preceded by a normal looking P wave. If so, this is a normal sinus rhythm. Also, look at leads 1 and AVF. If the complexes are both positive, this is a normal axis. Look at this 12 lead ECG. 
The PR interval is very short, and a delta wave is present. Therefore, this is a Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Conversely, if the PR interval is too long, that will be suggestive of an AV block. Don't forget to look at the size of the R waves in the lateral chest leads, as well as to assess for the presence of left ventricular hypertrophy. There would be usually accompanying deep S waves in the anterior chest leads that would suggest left ventricular hypertrophy. It is important not to miss long QT syndrome. These patients are predisposed to ventricular tachycardia specifically to SARTs. The correct QT is calculated by taking the distance of one QT and dividing that by the square root of the preceding RR interval. If the corrected QT is longer than 0.45 seconds, then that meets the criteria for long QT syndrome. In conclusion, the management of chest pain depends on the etiology of the chest pain. Look out for red flags when approaching a child with chest pain. Do not belittle the yields of a thorough history and physical examination, as they can help you derive your diagnosis. ECG and chest x-rays are important to identify specific cardiac and respiratory abnormalities, but you must know what to look out for and you should correlate these with your history and physical examination findings. Quiz time. Question 1. A 3-year-old boy comes in with chest pain and breathlessness that started one day ago. On physical examination, there is tracheal deviation to the left and the percussion note on the right lung is hyperresonant. What is your most likely diagnosis? A. Pleural effusion B. Pneumonia C. Pneumothorax or D. Pulmonary embolism The answer is C. Pneumothorax Question 2. Which of the following is not a red flag for chest pain? A. Breathlessness B. Feeling of tightness C. Syncope or D. Tenderness on palpation the answer is D. Question 3. Which of the following is not an important question to ask for past medical history for complaint of chest pain in a child? A. History of asthma. B. History of Marfan syndrome. C. History of Kawasaki's disease. Or D. History of travel. The answer is D. History of travel.